In this video, I'm going to go over my fuel pump setup and how I hotwired it on my 1994 Mitsubishi 3000 GT VR4. And I've had this car for probably 15 years, and for the last eight or nine years, I've, I've had a built motor in it, and I've had an aeromotive stealth fuel pump. And I had that hotwired, and I went to Cars and Coffee uh, several weeks ago. I drove up over the, the notch, smuggler's notch uh, in Vermont. And I came home, I shut my car off so that I could use the keys to open my door, pull my car in, and it would not start. And it was clearly a fuel issue. My gauge showed zero pressure as I was trying to start it. Uh, after letting it sit for two or three hours, it actually started up fine, drove in fine, and then it wouldn't start again. Um, after some troubleshooting, it was definitely the fuel pump, uh, but I decided to redo all the wiring and stuff with it just to tackle everything at once. So you probably noticed back here on the firewall, I've got this Harmony Audio uh, fuse distribution block. And this uses three ANL fuses in there, those little clear things. Uh, the color of the fuses uh, will differ based on what the amperage rating is. But it takes a four gauge wire in, and it does three eight gauge wire outs. And I've got an amplifier in the trunk for my subwoofer, an amplifier for my uh, speakers, a, a four channel amplifier, and the other one goes to my fuel pump. And part of the reason that I made, made that bracket and went with the distribution block is I had a lot of wire that was coming up to this positive post. It looked really cluttered. It was hard to, to fit it all there. And I had a few different size fuses that I'd have to deal with that just kind of hung down there. And I figured this would, would clean it up a little and it would it would make the connections uh, a lot cleaner. Instead of having crimps everywhere or stuff soldered, uh, this is pretty much wire that clamps right down with Allen keys and you can get it really tight and make a, a good secure connection. So if I go over here, this is the, the four gauge wire that I used for it. And you can get this on Amazon. I used it in my Supra for something. So I had, I had some stuff left over, uh, it's called Wind Nation PowerFlex welding battery cable. It's, it's oxygen free copper. It's not that CCA cold clad aluminum stuff. Uh, it's high quality wa wire. It's, it's pretty heavy. It's got some, some good weight to it. And I used four gauge for that to go to the distribution block. And then I said I ran eight gauge to the back. And the only thing I do not like about this is the, the color. It's red, but it's kind of like a flat red you can see how it contrasts with this four-wheeler it's not like a a deep dark bright red that like audio cable usually is so i i try to hide it um, you can't really see it over here because i've gone ahead and added some heat shrink stuff to it so it looks black but underneath there it's that same pale red and then the wire loom that you see that's got kind of the blue line on it that's some high heat wire loom that i got offline it's it can handle temperatures uh, that's a lot hotter than, than the normal stuff that, that you'd buy locally. And I have driven the car. One, one thing I've been a little worried about is the, the cover for that. It's, it's plastic. I don't know if, I didn't know if the heat would get to it, if it'd wanna melt, um, but it seems like it's, it's pretty good. And just in case for some reason down the line it wants to discolor, I've, I've bought a few extra ones just to have. I'm gonna pop the hatch. I need to replace one of my hatch uh, shocks. It doesn't want to hold up very well. It somehow got a little a little gouge in it, so you can see some fluid is, is leaked out. I've got one upstairs. I just I just gotta find it. Uh, but over here, that eight gauge wire runs to this nice Tyco relay. And I like that the, the beefy power wires actually bolt to it. And you can see this is the, the eight gauge wire coming in. And then I think I've got two uh, 10 gauge wire coming out here. One goes to the, the fuel pump assembly and the other goes to my, my meth pump. And then if we look under here, you can see the top of my fuel pump assembly. So this, this one right here is, is the ground wire and there's normally one wire going to it. I ran a, a second ground to it. And then over here is a uh, radium engineering fuel stud. So I got rid of the factory stud so I'm not tapped into the, the OEM wiring there. I go right directly to a stud. And I'm gonna show you how that looks uh, in, in a minute. 
and you can see underneath the cover, um, I cleaned it up, I painted it, I put some new foam on it, and I put a sheet of Thermotech mat just for kind of some more sound deadening purposes. Uh, the Walbro is a little noisier than the Aeromotive, um, so what I'm probably going to do is maybe dynamat the trunk and put a layer right over the top of that as well. And you can see that I've got kind of the sub box and I made this uh, three quarter inch MDF panel that goes down here, it looks pretty clean and it secures the meth pump. So even, even with the cover, that layer of mat, uh, that three quarter inch MDF and even the sunshade uh, connected in my hatch shut, if I listen carefully while the, the car is idling, um, with my loud exhaust, I can, I can still just barely hear um, the fuel pump. It's a little worse when the, the fuel level is lower, but when it's full, uh, you, you can just barely make it out. So I think a layer of mat there um, may, may quiet that down some. So I'm going to close this hatch just so it doesn't fall shut later. And I'm going to go over here and go over some of the stuff that I used. So this is the Harmony Audio. This is a four gauge in and it has four outputs, but it was, it was too big to use where I used the other one. It, it was too tall. Um, and these aren't, aren't very expensive. Uh, they're like $14, $15. And the, things that I, the thing that I like about it, see if this pops off, is it's held on by four screws. And they're not, they're not technically screws, they're like screw bolts. You can see um, it's, it's threaded. And there's actually metal collars put in here. So they, they turn in, they're not going to strip out when you put them in, take them out, put them in, take them out. And what I did is uh, I, didn't use, I didn't use this hardware. I used some Allen keys just because it's easier to kind of stick the, the little bolt onto uh, an Allen wrench and put it in than to try to hold it down there with your fingers and, and try to use a screwdriver to it. Uh, but it's, it's got some weight to it. It's very solid. It secures the fuses in. It's got those inserts, and this screws on, and it, it, looks, it looks pretty good, honestly. And if this, for some reason, does discolor down, down the line, hopefully it won't, uh, I've got two more that are, that are coming because they're like $13 or $14. And I did try uh, a few other ones out, and I was not happy with them. Uh, this is one. Uh, it's called T-Spec. I don't know the, the exact full name. Maybe that's, that's just what it's called. But this was also four gauge that comes in, it uses the fuses. Uh, but the thing I, I did not like about it, let's pull this red thing out, is there's not a second bolt for the other side of the fuse. So the same bolt that clamps down the wire also secures that side of the fuse. So what if you bottom this out and the, the wire you have in there isn't tight, you can't really do anything about it, or vice versa, what if, what if this tightens and it's not screwed in all the way to make a good contact with the fuse. So this would be a smaller footprint, uh, but I did not like the design, so I, I didn't end up using that. And then the other thing I didn't really like about it is it, it has these snaps, and I don't like anything that secures with plastic because over time it can become brittle and, and want to break. I think using the Allen keys on this is a, a better option. And then I did go with the uh, Tyco Relay, it's the same one that I use in my Supra, it's a 75 amp. Um, some of these cheap ones that you get from like the auto parts store are only 30 amp. This says 30 amp slash 40 amp, uh, so I'm not, I'm not really sure what, what that is, which is it, is it that range? Um, these are more superior, these are weather tight ones that you can buy and they're, they're made by Hella and they have a special wire harness that you have to get to them, so you can see the the wire there is, is thicker. Some of the cheap pigtails that you get will have what appears to be thick wire and then you skin them and it's just the coating that's thick. The wire isn't, isn't thick. So this probably would have sufficed and I probably would have went with this if it was just powering one fuel pump, but I went with the, the Tyco because it's also bringing power back from my, my meth tank. And then the last thing uh, that I want to go over are the, the fuel assembly studs. And I bought two different brands, and this is the kind that I use in my RX-7. This is from Racetronics, and this is the kind from Radium that I'm using in my 3000 GT. And honestly, I don't like either of them, but there's not really a better alternative. The thing with the Racetronics uh, is it's, it's a bigger footprint, so you have to drill a bigger hole, and there's honestly not really 
any good spot on the 3000 GT fuel assembly for this. And this uses O-rings and you have to do that big hole. And then you can see the gap in between. The thickness of the fuel pump assembly is, is a, a lot skinnier than that. So you actually have to take these to a belt sander. And this white stuff is a very hard ma material. It takes a long time to get it sanded down uh, to where it needs to be. And then the other thing about it is once you put this in and you, you get this tight and you're trying to tighten this, this top nut, it can want to spin this end. So if you've got your wiring kind of where you want it underneath, then you, you try to tighten it and it spins, it can kink that wiring over and it could make it want to rub on something. So I don't like that there's not a good way to, to secure this bottom from spinning. And the, the one from, from Radium has the, the same kind of problem. So this is the Radium. It doesn't use any O-rings whatsoever. And you can't buy them in a single pack. You have to buy them in a pack of five or six, which is good because you'll probably mess up some of the stuff like I did. And if you look here, you can see that you've got this collar and then you've got this washer. And you need to take this collar and sand it down to the thickness of what it's going in. And then that plastic washer on the bottom will, will mate up to it. And then you've got kind of a, a stud on the top and the bottom, those are walking nuts. So this has a much smaller footprint, which I like, but you also run into the same problem as you do with this one, where you try to tighten this nut. Even if you put a wrench on here, it can sometimes want to twist the bottom. And I also don't like that uh, it's pretty much this washer pressed up against that. You can see uh, right here, right here is one that I modified and I sanded it too, too small. But if you don't have that perfect, uh, it could present kind of an arcing, uh, arcing opportunity. And this, this plastic is very soft. Uh, it was sanded real easy. It's not as tough as this white stuff, which I don't like. And I think they made it way too thin. I'd, I'd like to see it a little thicker. Um, just tighten it down, the, the nut can want to dig into it. And I, I drew up how I, I would do it if, if it were me and, and I had my own business, but I would, I would do a bolt like this that you can do the wiring on. And I like, I like what Radium uh, did with theirs, but I would use two washers. I'd, I'd make it a slightly thicker material and I'd have the first washer have a bigger opening. So this can stick down past the bottom of where it's going into. And then this washer can go around it and then you can sand it flush and then you can use the other washer that'll press up against it. And then I've seen, I've seen some studs where like the end of the threads has an Allen key insert in it. So if you had an Allen key at the top of this bolt that you could put in there, you could keep that from spinning and, and tightening it down uh, real easy. So if someone ever designs something like this, I think they'll be well off and that's, that's what I would recommend using. This stuff works, uh, it's just, I, I, I think it could have been designed a little better. I, I know they sell a lot of them, uh, but when you're dealing with, with fuel and and power, um, I would I would try to try to over engineer it as much as possible. So that should cover everything. So four gauge through the distribution block to eight gauge to the fuel pump through the radium stud to my my Walboro fuel pump, and I'll include some pictures throughout the process to kind of show you what I was dealing with. And one last thing, I want to jump over to the fuel pump assembly, just because I didn't cover this real well. Um, this is a spare one that I have. Mine's still in the tank and I'm not going to pull it. Uh, but the Walboro has a bigger base on the bottom. This is an old super fuel pump, I think. So you have to modify the hanger in order to use it. Um, you can't use this collar thing, so you actually have to chop it off up here. And you have to connect it with a piece of submersible hose. And submersible hose has got to have a rating on it. See if I can find it. Uh, right, right here, SAE30R10, that means it's submersible, it means the inside of this line and the outside of the line can be, can be uh, in fuel. And you're probably not going to find this locally. Um, I, I bought it from Racetronics, they have it. Gate sells some as well, it's a little more expensive uh, and a lot more expensive because people are marking it up on eBay. Um, but Gate seems to be out of stock everywhere right now. And when you buy the Walbro uh, fuel kit, with a, with a filter and stuff that it comes with. It's gotta come with this 
plastic hose. And you can see right away, it's, it's way too long. If you were to put it on a pump, um, the only spot that you can clamp it is up here. You can't cut it in this accordion section. It's not flexible enough to, to do a, a loop in it. Maybe you could buy a shorter plastic one, uh, but I would just get some of this rubber submersible stuff. And this is 5 sixteenths. Um, 3 eighths has got to be a little too big for this. It's got to want to slide too easy. Uh, I know some people have, have double clamped it, um, but I would just do 5 sixteenths. And this is around, uh, I think, 12 or $13, and then double that for shipping if it's all you buy from, from uh, Racetronics. So I said you have to cut that. And the other thing you have to do is you've got to lose lose this fork, take it take it right off. I actually cut the mount for it off here as, as well, but I don't think I needed to do that. And then people will clamp this right around this base with a worm clamp. And I did that initially, and I, I heard some of the fuel pump sounds when I had it in. So I thought, oh, maybe the, the vibration of it is kind of echoing up um, because I've got it clamped there with no kind of spacer. So what I did, and I, I think it may have helped just, just a little bit, is I took some of the old rubber stops that I had that would go on the bottom of the fuel pump. You can see this one has one right here. And I sandwiched that in between just to, to help with the, with the dampening. So I, I think that did help some. And then the last thing with the wall bro, it's going to come with this big connector on it. It's like oversized, it's the biggest connector you'll probably ever see off a fuel pump. And there's no real good way um, to tuck that in and try to use it. And I tried to use it, I had it zip tied right here, and it, it, it won't fit. This, this has a small assembly on it and wanted to push the thing over. It actually caused my wire to chafe right here. Um, so I lost the connector and I, I just used crimps to give me more room. And then I, I swapped this out. This was the one that was on my fuel pump with this chafed wire. I swapped it out with this extra assembly I have just so I wouldn't have uh, exposed wire right here. And then for the wiring, so if you look on the top, there's a bunch of connectors. And let's see if I can find the right one. Uh, so this was the ground, and then this is the power wire right here. And when I initially went into this, or how, how my fuel pump was hot-wired before, is I, I basically had just cut this wire that goes to it, and then the end on the connector side, I ran to the, the hot wire relay to trigger it, and then from the power wire, the thick power wire coming off it, I had just tied back into the other side of the wire. But I wanted to do a single connection, um, so I started digging this out. It's like plastic or epoxy filled, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe Mitsubishi has a nut under there, and if I dig carefully, I can get to it and then just reuse the stud that they have. Uh, but it seems to be some kind of rivet connection, or maybe it's just a little post on the top, and they put the terminal over it and then press it down. So to get that out, you have to, you have to drill it out. You can't reuse a stock stud. Um, so if I kept going, and I drilled it completely out. And then to my surprise, I thought there'd be a hole behind it. Uh, that I could use the, the radium kit through. And there is a hole, but it's like octagon shape. It's not a round hole. And the hole that it left uh, was about the right size. Um, it, was, it was just a, a tad on the large side. So this, this collar in here would, would fit in it, but it'd kind of just slide back and forth ever so slightly. Uh, so what I did is radium delivers this uh, heat shrink tube, and this is fuel safe heat shrink tube. Um, I just cut a little piece and I put it uh, around this collar so that thickened it up some and then it, it didn't want to move around and it, it fit in the octagon hole and uh, it, I think it helped center it. And then I, I clamped it or I bolted it down and I put it in, I put a full, full tank of gas in my car and I drove it and right before I, I got back home I, I jerked the wheel back and forth just to really slosh it around. And as soon as I pulled in the driveway, I, I, I looked under the cover and it was bone dry. So that's what I did. It seems to work. And I think that pretty much covers everything. If you have any questions, let me know.